That's a nice contrast. Gotta get some more blue in it. So I put a color down and then I modify it. In this case, I keep flip-flopping between the blue and the orange. A Little bit of yellow in there too. Let's take a look at the water, it's very pink. Um, I wanna make it a little less warm. I'm not gonna grab a blue. There's a green, a bluish green that's gonna work really well for us here. So we'll get some of this in through the water, that's nice. And probably do a blue on top of this as well. So I'm sucking this into the water. So that's looking really nice. I think I will grab a blue. Let's do a powder blue. So this has white mixed into it already. Let's use it in the back. So I wouldn't want to put a saturated blue back here in the water because I need that to go back. And that's working really nicely. And then as we come forward, I can do more of that cool blue. And I think I'm gonna break up this direction also. It's too vertical at this point. And that's working really nicely. The paper that I'm working on is um, a, a watercolor paper, but not um, a real cold press. It's got some texture, but not a ton of texture because you don't want your pencil to just sit on top of the peaks and not go down into the valleys. It'll end up giving this really speckled feeling. But you do want some texture so that the pencil can grab onto something. So this paper seems to be working out really nicely for that. And I'm trying to really think about where the sky and the tree meet. So you've got some positive negative there, some interaction of the shapes. So it's not a harsh outline. And let's establish that a little bit more. I think I'll take, I'll take that indigo and get some darks in there. So you get some more of that wonderful gesture in there. So you can see even this far into the drawing, I can make refinements and it works. I think I need some more yellow back there, but I don't wanna pick a saturated yellow. So I'm gonna go into a yellow that isn't so saturated. It's got some white mixed into it. This is a jasmine. And that's really nice. Sometimes uh, you can unify your composition by using one color all over. Not real heavy, you want everything else to still show through. But it's almost like a light wash over everything. Continuing, I think the darks need to be darker. So we're gonna continue to work with those. And I can get more aggressive with building those up. And those are starting to come up really nicely now. So again, haven't grabbed green. I'm kind of heading that way. I'm not real concerned with them being real green. Instead, I'm sort of looking at warm and cool. So here we go, Ooh, that's nice. That's working really well. And there's that shoreline. Let's darken that as well. So I had some red under there. Now I'm gonna go in for an even heavier blue. And I am gonna grab some more green in through there again, not to turn it green, but because it'll work so nicely to give this body. And I think those will need some blues too. So I'm gonna do that right now. I've got a blue here. Take a look at where the water and the trees are meeting. Using a little bit of line down and through here. That's coming along really nicely. Because our eye focuses on the edge, to have a little bit of a drawn line can really help define where you are and what you're trying to say. And we're doing that here in our clouds. That's nice. A little bit of line work there. Okay, let's step back and see what we've got here. Um, it looks good. I think we're almost done. What I want to do is push the lights in the dark. Since I really can't push the light so much, I want to attack the darks just a little bit more. So I'm going to grab this really nice true blue, that's a primary blue, and just get a little bit more solidity and stability into this bottom landmass. There we go, that's nice. And I'm um, going to grab my reds also. I'm going to go for a warm red this time, not the cool red. And there's a little bit of land kind of action happening. That looks really nice. So that works really well. The warm red contrasted against the cool. Another thing that will help is just darkening that bottom line so that um, this can hold up the rest of the composition. Let's sort of solidify this in through here. That's nice. 
Okay. All right. Stopping is sometimes a challenge. So I try and stop before it gets too tight and too fussy because what I like is the immediacy, the gesture, the fact that you can see the lines, you can see the colors, but I don't want to stop too soon either. So I am going to fuss just a little bit more, focusing on what I've established for edges and just really defining those. Get a little more. And you can kind of, you know, in that top layer, you can think about flourishes. And not so much detail, but maybe some smaller marks that would have gotten lost had they been introduced earlier in the composition. So here we go with those. That's nice, okay. Gotta get that nice line where the land meets the water. Almost done. Okay, getting there. So what we've done here today is from a blank piece of white paper, we've drawn a very vibrant, complex landscape. We started with a red outline drawing, trying to maintain the gesture of the landscape. Then we went back in with saturated colors, building up the darks, maintaining some of the lights, modifying complementary colors, looking at edges, and using almost the entire Prismacolor color pencil box to get this vibrant landscape.